suppose you had a nice body. Would you hold it against me? <laughs> That's funny. I like that. I wasn't kidding. Uh, what makes you think you're so tough, Hammer? I eat shredded wheat without milk. I understand you have been cutting into my territory. Visiting sewers was never my style. We never seem to have enough time anymore. Uh, we do have time for this. I'm not that old, but I can remember when Greenwich Village was filled with long-haired kids beating their bongos. Nowadays, the bongos are electric and the kids have rainbow hair. One thing for sure, it's never been dull in the village. I was supposed to be at the garden with Pat tonight, watching the Knicks take on the Celtics. But the kid was doing a set, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. There was no doubt about it. Vicki Cornell had a voice that could really get your motor running. She got to everybody in the place, even the kids with the pointy heads. I knew her because I babysat her a while back while she kicked a heroin habit. Vicki, cut the table for you, Mr. Hammer. How'd you know it was me? Uh, well, she said you'd be the first guy without purple hair and an earring. <laughs> Fear, right? You got it. to dedicate this next number to someone who's very, very special to me.
that was great. Even better than I remember. God, I missed you. If you stay away too long, I'm going to forget your face. I missed you, too. Sit down. Thanks for coming. I know this isn't exactly your scene. Hi, babe. You were great tonight. Except for that last song. Whoa, let's 86 stuff like that from now on. Hey, pal, I like that song. I'm <laughs> sure you did. You're not exactly what I'd call with it. Nothing personal. Who are you? Vicky's father or something? He's a good friend, Carl. Vicky, we'll wait for you by the door. I'll be out in a minute. This Carl, friend of yours? You know how hard I've worked, and you know how hard it's been to get this far. Carl's got money. He says he's willing to front the bucks to produce an album. That's what he says. Come on, Mike. It's strictly a business deal. Hey, you know I can take care of myself. I'm not exactly a stranger on the streets. Listen, you deserve the best. You've come a long way. I just don't want to see you blow it, that's all. Don't worry about a thing. Everything's fine. Well, I better go now. Thanks for coming. Hey, you were great. Thank you. I made a note to myself to check back with Vicky next week. There was something about the company she was keeping I just didn't like. You and Vicky were. What happened? Looks like an OD. An OD? No way, Pat. She wasn't a hype. She's been straight for six months. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Harry Wells, narcotics, Mike Emmer. So funny, Henry. The lady had this in her purse, tracks on her arms. And your card in her hand. I figure she popped a hot shot and uh, was calling a connection for her. You, Mike, yeah. Mike, Mike, oh, right. Mike, easy, easy. Hey. Trying to put two and two together, doctor, that's all. Hey. You buy this? Depends on what the medical examiner has to say. Get what the medical examiner has to say. I want to know what you think. Mike, I don't know. I just don't know on this one. Well, I do. Vicky was not a high path. She was clean. I remember the photographer at the club taking Carl Pennington's picture. I had a hunch it would show up in the society pages, and I was right. The cops could take their fancy overdose theory and shove it. Vicky was murdered, and Pennington was my only clue. The medical examiner said that the heroin that killed Vicky was over 40% pure. Too hot to handle. But the tracks were fresh. She was clean up until then. I tell you, Velda, her eyes were clear, her mind was right. She was okay. Give me those things. Thanks. You'll thank me in 20 years. Who can think ahead that far? Oh, 
banger. I didn't have any trouble finding the Pennington house. It was the smallest one on the block. In fact, it was the block. Hello. My name is Mike Hammer. I'm a private investigator, and I believe uh, Carl Pennington lives here. Carl's my brother. I'm Connie Pennington. Why do you want to see him? Carl was with a friend of mine last night. My friend is dead. I'm sorry about your friend, but I'm sure my brother had nothing to do with it. Her name was Vicki Cornell. She was young and pretty, just like you. Was she here last night? Why don't you come on inside and... My daughter wasn't home last night. She wouldn't know. I'm Veronica Pennington. My camera. Aren't you due at the Antique Guild? Yes, Mother. I'm sorry about your friend. Stepdaughter. Mrs. Pennington, I... Uh... Veronica, please. Veronica. Do you happen to know where Carl is? No, I don't. Well, if and when you're in touch with him, would you please have him call me? I hope you don't think this girl's death is connected in any way to a member of my family. I certainly hope not. Hope to see you again, Mr. Hammer. I'm sure you will, Mrs. Bennett. Something told me to take a tour of the grounds. And I saw some signs of life in the pool house. All right, wake up, Carl. Come on, Carl. Hey, come on, wake up, wake up. Come on, wake up. Listen, time for some questions, buddy. Where were you last night when you left the club? I don't know. You don't know? Uh. Well, let me refresh your memory, Carl. Now, I want to know, where did you go last night when you left the club, huh? Here. I think here. Okay. You came back here. And were the two girls with you? I don't know. Vicki Cornell, do you remember her? Yeah, I remember Vicki. Yeah. Was Vicki with you? I don't know. Well, you better work on that one, pal. Vicki is dead. Vicki's dead? That's right. Somebody killed her. I, I didn't do it. Yeah? You were the last one seen with her when you left the club. Now listen, Carl, you better do yourself a favor and start remembering the events of last night. I'd help you if I could. But I'm a blank. I, I just don't remember. Hey, what are you doing out here anyway? Don't they let you in the main house? Veronica lets me use the pool house to crash. I got my own place in town. Shoot up, Vicky. No, I swear I didn't. You've got some big problems, Carl. Now, I want you to pull it together and remember what happened last night because I'm not through with you. I'll be back. It just didn't make sense. A junkie who was afraid of needles. Carl Pennington didn't remember much, but maybe the two girls with him that night did. So I asked Velda to track them down through the photographer at the club. I also asked her to start shaking the Pennington family tree to see if any squirrels dropped out. Huh. With a place like this, I couldn't figure out why Carl kept running home to crash at stepmoms. Why is it that some guys who can score touchdowns and hit home runs still have to find their high at the end of a needle? I'm uh, Bradley Schneider, attorney for the Pennington family. Really? I thought you were just another dumbbell. After I talked to my client and they told me about your little escapade, I made some inquiries. I figured you were stupid enough to show up here. You've interrupted my daily workout, Mr. Hammer, so I'll come right to the point. 
Any more unwarranted, illegal, uninvited intrusions on the Pennington family, and uh, this film will be sent over to the district attorney. You tell your clients they've got nothing to worry about. Good. Provided they weren't involved with the murder of Vicki Cornell. Well, I shall see you again sometime, Mrs. Snyder. I called Velda and asked her to run down some info on family attorney Bradley Snyder with his fancy jogging suit. I never understood guys who got all dressed up just to sweat. She told me Pat had something he wanted to show me. I say, Mike. Pat. Hey, well, 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 who do we have here? Hey, it's the working girl's friend. Very funny. I thought they fed the animals at dawn. You know, you're about as funny as that stiff on the gurney hammer. Why don't you see if you can make him laugh, huh? Cute, Harry. With you around, he probably died laughing. Mike, you know this guy? No. Should I? Should you, Hammer? His name is Cappy Hinton. You deed on some bad junk. Only he wasn't your, uh, you know, your average hole-in-the-arm loser. He was doing a little pushing, too. His room was full of these babies. Well, do you recognize the packaging? What? Huh? Same as your girlfriend's, right? Oh, come on. That's your case? You're gonna bury this poor kid's murder just because of some lousy tinfoil? Oh, no, Mike. There's more. Vicky's name is in his address book. Come on. It's obvious. Pusher and a hype are both using the same stuff, which the lab says is bad. They go belly up. Case is closed. Hey, no loss to society, right, huh? Theater here on AMA. Cappy Hinton's rap sheet was full of nothing but two bit busts, shoplifting, flashing, but he wasn't a pusher. I leaned on Pat to find out who controlled the Midtown narcotics action. It was Jake Gill. So I called in a marker from Wholesale Sal. Word is he's a mule making a delivery for Jake Gill. Yeah, but where is he? We've been here for two hours, Wholesale. Patience, Mike. Have I ever failed you? This info is as good as gold. It's more than I can say for your suit. Look at this. Feel this material. This baby cost six big ones on the rack at Bloomingdale's. I can let you have it for 30 bucks. Eh? Plus, I'll throw in an extra pair of pants. Action. Hey, wait a minute. Hey. Welcome to America. I just love it when you talk dirty to me. Michael! Muchkin. You finally found my favorite restaurant. The Muku guy pan is excellent here. That's not why you're here. You know him? Jake Gill? Jake Gill is the last man you want to be messing with, Mike. All right, listen, Mucci, I want you to talk to him. Mm -mm. I want you to tell him that the Greek didn't deliver, that I have his special import package. I don't want to have to tell him that, Michael. I hate eating bullets with my Chinese food. His or Betsy's? That's what I like about you, Michael. You're so very, very persuasive. Talk to him, would you? Talking to him. I think it's important for you to talk to Want something 
I have something. Two pounds of China white. I don't know what you're talking about. Then I guess I'm wasting my time. But I do know that whoever does own this material would probably want it returned. Soon. But since it's not yours, you should probably butt out. Not now. What makes you think you're so tough, Hammer? I eat shredded wheat without milk. You know, people who take other people's property have been known to find themselves permanently horizontal with a lot of dirt on their face. I'll make a note. Yeah. I'll be talking with you. Yeah. Love your shirt. Excuse me, Bozo. Camera investigation. Yeah, it's me. What did you find on Nancy Gibson? The photographer. All I get is her answering machine. But Veronica Pennington called. She wants to meet you at La Petite Florette. She doesn't sound like a mother to me, Mike. She's a mother, all right. You shake anything else out of their family tree? Yeah, I checked with the probate department. Carl and his sister each get a third of Papa's estate when they turn 25. That's only a few weeks away for Connie. But right now, Veronica's got it all. Well, did I ever tell you you had a suspicious mind? Must be the company I keep. I'll see you later. Okay. Keep the change. She is. She looks great. Hello. Nice place. It is now. Sit. I ordered for you scotch, no ice. Hope that was all right. Actually, it's beer, but this is fine. Thanks. <laughs> I heard about your meeting with Bradley. Yeah. He's a classic guy. I felt I owed you an explanation about Carl. About Carl? Or about the fact that you lied to me that he wasn't there? It's the same. Since my husband, Carl's father, died, Carl hasn't been the same. There's something you don't know about Carl. Something hardly anybody knows. He's a drug addict. Have you tried to help him? We have run out of doctors and programs. So you lied in order to protect him. What are you afraid of? Publicity? Yes, exactly. You're fighting a losing battle. Carl was at the club the other night, escorting two lovelies. Uh, not exactly your come to tea types. And the photographer was snapping every single move. Did you happen to see them at the house? No. What about Vicky? You did see her there. Earlier in the evening, but she said she was ill and she left. Since I couldn't see any possible connection between her visit and her death, I didn't say anything. Publicity again, right? Excuse me. Uh, don't leave. I've ordered. Sorry, I've lost my appetite. I was surprised to see Assistant D.A. Barrington. With a date yet. I recommend the veal. Uh, why not try the tuna? It's cheaper and much, much better for you. Hammer. Do me a favor, will you? We've got this guy in narcotics. His name is Harry Welch. For some reason, he doesn't like you. I don't know. Anyway, the point is, we're this close to closing the books on a major heroin supplier, and I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't mess things up for us. I wouldn't dream of it. Listen, I gotta go. Hammer. That's the kitchen. I know. Getting bored with you, bozo. Just relax. Tomorrow's collection day. Hello. 
know, Jake? Hammer. Listen tight and don't interrupt, because I'm not going to repeat myself. Be at the West 32nd Street Pier at 8 o'clock tonight, and you can kiss a white Christmas goodbye. I wasn't doing anything, and Mr. Gill thought I might enjoy the ride. All right, I'm here. Show and tell time, Jake. Hey, watch that. It's a lot of bread you're messing with. Can we get on with this? I have a date. She'll wait. All right, Hammer, what do you want to know? It's a small-time hype pusher named Cappy Hinton in the Bowery. Do you supply him? There was no pusher named Cappy Hinton. You sure? What did he just say, Mike? Did you ever furnish an uptown swell named Carl Pennington? Never heard of him. Do you know a singer named Vicky Cornell? Have you said Broad? No. No, I don't know her. Now look, Hammer, if we're through playing show and tell, hand that stuff over here. What is this stuff? It's about 90% pure age and heroin, isn't it? It's about two pounds worth. Mike, you being an accountant can be bad on your health right now. Oh, really? This stuff is bad for hey, your health. What? Uh, what are you doing? Get down! No! Ah! No! Ah! That was a bad mistake, Hammer! Yeah, well, I made a few in my time, but that wasn't one of them. You missed a spot. Taxi? The dust, Hammer. You're a walking dead man. Jake, just so there's no bad feelings, I know Angie's cleaner on 6th Avenue. Go down there, tell him I recommended you. You get a buck off. Ugh. Very funny, Mike. Very funny. That's what I like about my man. He has no sense of reality. Who cleaners, anyway? reached the club photographer, so I decided to go down to Soho and find her myself. I hoped she was a good photographer. I also hoped she was just a lousy housekeeper. Tony Quartz says Nancy Gibson didn't hang herself. Somebody else did it for her. Brilliant. Two little leaguers could have told us that. Huh. Captain Chambers, telephone. Yeah. Captain Chambers is all day long. Whoa, hey, nice three. Hello, Captain. I understand you have been cutting into my territory. Visiting sewers was never my style. Oh, cute, cute. You went after Jake Gill. Yeah, and I found him. Where were you? Mr. Hammer, I am putting you on official notice. You keep messing your nose around where it doesn't belong, and I am going to jam you for possession of narcotics and obstruction of justice. Do you understand? I'll make a note. You do that. Hi. Hello. I'm Colette. What can I do for you? A lot, I'm sure, but I'm here to see Mucci. I told you you had a nice body. Would you hold it against me? <laughs> That's funny. I like that. I wasn't kidding. Mm -hmm. I don't know your name. I don't know your face. I never saw you. It was a real nice performance you gave the other night, Michael. The only reason I didn't get busted up is Gil is convinced that you are a wacko. What did you tell him? <laughs> what did I tell him? I told him the truth, that you are psychotic. Have you ever considered serious medical treatment, Mike? Yes, I've considered it. <clears throat> Listen, Moochie, I know I don't win any awards for diplomacy with guys like Jake Gill. No, you don't. 
And I don't know what kind of a relationship you've got with him. I really don't care. But Vicky Cornell is dead. And one way or another, I can't help but feel that guys like Jake Gill are responsible. I need your help. I want you to talk to me about Carl Pennington. Now, if a guy like Carl is young, wealthy, Westchester type, wanting to get lined up with a couple of hookers, who would he go to? Bunch of lucky day, Michael. Because I happen to know the dude. I thought you might. Yeah, yeah. You want something? Yeah, a few minutes of your time. If you're interested in private lessons, there's a card in my bag. Do they know you're a pimp around here? We're through for today, honey. We'll pick it up tomorrow. You know, I don't know how you got in here, but I do know how you're leaving. You better put the racket down, pal. It's going to become your lunch. What do you want? The two bimbets who hang out with Carl Pennington. Dee Dee and Kim. Where can I find them? They're working. The Woodward building. It's all this. You must give good lesson. You can't go in there. Watch this. Good afternoon, Mr. Clark. Well, it's nice to see a man uh, enjoying a wide variety of interests. In your case, obviously, sports and nursery rhymes. Who the hell are you? My name's Hammer. I'll be representing your wife in her divorce proceedings against you. Now, where did I put those documents? Uh, my wife and I have an arrangement. She knows exactly what I'm doing. Really? Well, almost exactly. Call security, Jason. Great. The more witnesses we have to this cozy little scene, the better. Your wife is getting quite a settlement from you, eh, Mr. Clark? Uh, Jason! Wait. Mother Goose never had it so good, huh? You know, I remember you from the club. Who are you? Actually, I sell life insurance. In this case, yours. What are you talking about? Tell me about that night over at Carl Pennington's house. Come on, girls. This is serious. Hey, look. We didn't take anything that didn't belong to us. Hey, we were in the pool house. Carl went up to the big house to get us some more dope. What happened to Vicky Cornell? We waited for a while, then she went in after him. They never came back. We got bored and split. You never saw Vicky again after that? Wasn't our problem. Yeah? Well, somebody thinks it is. They're looking for you. And they're not as nice as I am. Now, I strongly suggest you girls split town for a while. Gary went out of business. He asked me to give you your severance pay. For you? And you. Hey, 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 we really appreciate this. Mm -hmm. And since he already paid $500... You know, I'm out. curious. Uh, what do you girls do for that kind of money? Oh, no, no, never mind, never mind. You better get out of here as fast as possible. Please, we gotta talk. You gotta get me out of this. I swear I'll never do it again. You promise? All right. I was tired and I was frustrated. But I wasn't so far gone not to notice that the thin piece of tape I always put between the door and the jam was broken. Tell me it's a mistake. That our houses look alike and you thought I was a burglar. Come on. Besides, I've got a landlady downstairs who hates loud noises. Why are you trying to kill me? Because you're trying to hurt Carl. He can't take care of himself. I am all he has. Did Carl kill Vicky Cornell? No. He couldn't kill anyone. Then you've got nothing to worry about. Because I'm only looking for the guy who killed Vicky. I want you to leave Carl alone. I'm so worried that something horrible is going to happen to him. Like O.D.? Listen, I understand. I know what it is to love someone and then have them taken away from you. Carl is all I have. What about Veronica? <laughs> and my stepmother. She was my father's toy. 
Carl and I have no use for her. Then why don't you get out of there? And go where? My shrink says I'm trying to replace Daddy. Theater here on AMA. Say, Doc. Hi, Beth. Uh, don't give him any cigarettes. Why don't you face it? You're never gonna quit smoking. Yeah. Give the gumball machine to my kid. Yeah, sure. Hey, pick up on this. Go down to the jazz club tonight. They won't be to sit in on drums just for laughs. Yeah? Why don't you come along? No, thanks. I'm working. Uh huh. Not anymore, you're not, old buddy. Restraining order, signed, sealed, and delivered. You go anywhere near the pending to family again, you'll have a date with the judge. You tell the judge I don't kiss till the second date? Oh, you're serious, old buddy. Snyder's pulling all the right strings on this one. Yeah, not by himself he is, and I got a feeling we're talking yo-yo here. Barrington. I know it. He's backing him all the way. Mike, don't you think it's time? The dead need to be buried. Let Vicky rest. Pat. Vicky is resting. I'm the guy that can't rest. Listen, I am not going to bury this case. I know there's something there. The bottom line in this whole investigation is narcotics. And you tell me something. Harry Welsh has not been overly enthusiastic. Have you got any proof against him? Nothing that would stand up in court. Then I don't want to buy it. We're not talking about some two-bit street hustler here. We're talking about a cop. You got some facts? I'll listen. No facts, no audience. Oh, I shouldn't be doing this. Oh, you're a doll, Georgia. Lose my job. Yeah, nobody will find out except us and the spiders. This is crazy. There's always is. I could never say no to you. Thank goodness. Files over here. Okay, every arrest Detective Harry Welch ever made. Right. Five minutes, Mike, that's all. Yeah. beginning to come clear. Harry Wells used to work vice, and his early arrest records included some prostitution busts. One of them was none other than Veronica Pennington. So Wells had known her all along, and each arrest resulted in no conviction. This was quite a pair to draw to. Veronica had made a giant leap, prostitution to society marriage, and then a convenient auto accident in the Catskills made her a rich widow who was about to become even richer. They can put in new walls and fancy furniture and take out the trapeze, but they can't erase the memories of the women who wasted away inside the world's oldest profession. Veronica didn't want to see me until I mentioned the Lido Hotel. I knew she'd remember. Well, how do I look? In a grave. Clothes don't make the lady. Oh, I suppose a private detective is high society. I'm for hire, not for sale. I was pretty good here. Actually, I was sensational. I'll bet you were. So quiet. I know how you and I can raise the noise level. <laughs> About Carl's drug problem. You know, it's a funny thing. The kid is actually afraid of needles. You were the one who was injecting him, weren't you, Veronica? And that's why he kept coming back to the house. You're gonna spoil the whole thing, aren't you? Vicki Cornell saw you injecting Carl. You were setting your stepson up for an accidental overdose down the line, and Vicki happened to stumble into the secret, and you had to kill her. 
It's the trust money, isn't it? Of course it's the money. God knows I'm not going to kill for a man. And then your narc buddy Welsh? He's the one who actually iced Vicky, isn't he? That's not bad, Hammer. But you didn't check far enough. Welsh just pulled Veronica off the street. You should have checked my file. I was assistant DA at the time. I put her back out there. I'm afraid I was forced to clean up after her uh, initial miscues. Uh-huh. Hookers and velvet sweatsuits, eh, Snyder? You're full of surprises. You actually do have a wide range of interests. Well, both serve their purposes for a while, at least. I let Veronica do all that dirty work. Bradley! Hammer's right, dear. Clothes don't make the lady. Hello, Mike. What a great family. You must be a laugh riot at Christmas. Well, that's a secret you're going to take to your grave, Hammer. You lured the Penningtons here in violation of your restraining order and killed Veronica. Fortunately, I arrived in time to kill you before you could harm Connie. Nobody's going to buy that garbage, Snyder. Well, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to tell your side of the story. Now, take your gun out. Uh, 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 uh. Left. Two fingers. Put it on the floor. No, no. Let him kick it over. Lady and Judy O'Grady are sisters under the skin. Veronica and Connie had proven just that. She had a beautiful voice, didn't she? Yeah, she sure did. I was gonna help her. I know I was. I wanted to tell you that I'm staying straight now. I'm in a pretty good rehabilitation program. Hey, that's great. I'd like to give you some money. Why? I never worked for you. You saved my life. That would have killed me. I'll tell you what. Take this money, put an ad in the trades, and find a good young singer. Give her a break. I think you sure would have liked it that way. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll let you know what happens. Good luck. to live a lifetime to know that glory comes and goes. Sometimes we only get a moment it's all ours. Vicky never really made it up in lights, but for me, she'd always be a star. Won't you tell him, please put on some speed, follow my lead, oh how
Forget the breakfast of champions, it's the breakfast of billionaires. Kellogg's Cereal Revolution has earned these brothers a spot on biography as Billionaires Week continues tonight at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Now, a routine investigation uncovers a major underworld murder plot on Remington Steel, next on a and &E.